OK, so how hot are young planets? Well, the basic idea is you're forming a planet. So say a little bit of it's formed, and then you get more matter falling in from infinity. And because it's falling in from infinity, the gravity makes it go faster and faster until it hits the middle, whereupon its kinetic energy is turned into heat. And then, so you've got a slightly bigger planet in the middle, then even more matter falls in, gets faster and faster, ends up making the planet a little bit bigger, and dumping yet more heat. Now, for each individual lump that comes in, we can work out how much energy it has when it reaches the surface from potential energy. Let's say it starts at infinity. The potential energy at the surface is g, mass of whatever's in the middle, mass of the lump that's falling in over r, where r is the radius at that time. So in principle, what we could do is just go through with this. So steadily add bit by bit, and for each bit we work out this. As each bit is added, the r gets bigger, so the energy you get per lump goes down, but also the m gets bigger, so the mass you get per unit energy goes up. In fact, that's the biggest effect, um, because mass is proportional to r cubed. So, generally speaking, the last lumps to come and dump more energy than the early ones. To do this properly, you would therefore actually integrate. You would take this equation and sum it over all the different lumps coming in and gradually build it up. However, for today's purpose, we're just going to estimate the value. Uh, roughly to within an order of magnitude or so. And the way we're going to do that is assume that half the mass of the gas giant magically appears there all by itself, and then we drop the other half in from infinity, and we can work out how much energy half falling onto half would do. So, what is that energy? Well, that's just going to be this energy here. So the potential energy is going to be gravitational constant, the mass of the lump in the middle, which is half the mass, final mass, times the infalling mass, another half the final mass, all over, let's say, bring it into the radius of the final planet. It'll actually be a bit less than that, so this is an underestimate of how much energy you're going to get. So that equals g m squared over 4r. Now, if we substitute in the mass of Jupiter, which is 2 by 10 to the 27 kilograms, gravitational constant 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, and we substitute in the radius of Jupiter, which is 7 by 10 to the 7 meters, we end up with an energy of about 10 to the 36 joules. Probably are under underestimate, as we said, so it's probably a little bit bigger than that, but it gives us the rough magnitude. Now, that's a big number, but of course astronomy is full of big numbers. Uh, how can we estimate whether that's going to make things hot enough? Is that enough to make something with a mass of Jupiter hot? Well, as I said, the mass of Jupiter is 2 by 10 to the 27 kilograms. How much energy does it need to increase something of that mass by one degree? We have to multiply that by the specific heat capacity, which is exactly the number of degree, um, joules you need to raise one kilogram by a degree. Now, I don't actually know what the average specific heat capacity of Jupiter is. Um, Jupiter is mostly made of hydrogen, helium, and ice, and things like that. But let's say it's approximately that of water, so about 4,000 joules per kelvin kilogram. Now that's um, probably too high. Uh, most substances, the gases, are actually have lower specific heat capacities. Water is one of the highest specific heat capacities around. But that'll do roughly for we're doing an approximate calculation to get a rough order of magnitude. So the energy needed to change the temperature by one degree is 4,000 times that. Um, so 1,000 to 10 to the 3, that brings up 10 to the 30, 2 times 4, so it's about, so roughly, 10 to the 31 joules to raise the temperature by 1 Kelvin. So this means, if we compare it with this, that we have enough energy to raise everything by 
10 to the 36 over 10 to the 31, so by about 10 to the 5 degrees. So you started at absolute zero, it would be 100,000 degrees by the time we finished. So, oodles of energy, plenty of energy by any estimation to make a planet very, very hot. It won't get that hot because as it starts falling, a lot of the heat to be radiated away. But there's clearly plenty of heat to go around and you'd expect newborn giant planets to be extremely hot.